All right. I think we're live. We live? I think so. All right. Hey, everybody. How are we doing? All right. Did everyone have a good Halloween? Um, I'd like you to put into the comments how many pounds of candy you think you or your kids collected last night. Okay. That's what I want to know. How many pounds of candy you or your kids collected last night? Um, I am... I. I, and I know you don't have any children. I have three. I'm going to go for the fact that my kids probably collected close to 20 pounds each. Man, that is, that yeah. is quite a lot of sugar to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like right? there's no other word to describe it. It's ridiculous, but I'm going to guess that they were, they were probably in the, in the 20 pounds each. Now, um, I want to let you know what we do with this candy. Okay. Because, because this is what's important, right? What the kids will do is tonight they'll come home from school and they'll each pick like 10 pieces of candy that they want. Okay. So go ahead and, and write in the comments below what your favorite candy is, right? So they're going to go through and they're going to pick out their favorite candy, maybe an M&Ms, maybe a Snickers, maybe a hundred grand, maybe a baby Ruth, right? They're going to get rid of the candy that they don't want. They're going to only keep 10 pieces. What are they going to do with the rest, Ed? Ask me what they're going to do with the rest. What are they going to do with all that extra candy that they have, Jeff? Ah, I'm really glad you asked. They oh. are going to give it to the troops. And so that's what my kids do. They actually trick or treat for the troops. And, uh, and so they know that they can't eat 20 pounds of candy. But what we do is we load up all the candy. Our school collects it. We then take the candy and we send it to the military who distributes it to our soldiers, both in the U.S. and abroad. That's really awesome. That's actually yeah. really cool. Yeah. And so, you know, on that note, um, can you, can you just, I don't, I, I'm putting you on the spot cause I didn't tell you I was going to have you talk about this, but can you explain to everybody what those boxes are behind you? Yeah. So these are actually full of donations for toys for tots and we're actually collecting donations. Aren't we Jeff? We are. Yeah. And, uh, all these boxes chock full. Yeah. And, Essentially, what we're trying to do at Seller Labs is we're trying to use um, our experience, our expertise in the Amazon selling space to help people less fortunate than us uh, during this holiday season. So if you go to sellerlabs.com slash T for T, you can see how you can participate. Um, so far, we've collected over $12,000 worth of retail uh, value of goods from sellers like you. So this is uh, th these are from sellers like you. And what we're here to do is, is we're here to help you facilitate your giving. So if you have products that you want to liquidate, if you have um, if you sell toys, if, if you just want to go buy a toy, we have a bunch of ways for you to kind of participate in what we're doing. And we have some cash um, th that we're using to help you out. So like we had a customer who had a bunch of products they wanted to liquidate. We helped cover the shipping cost to get those products into Toys for Tots. So um, we're trying to take our money. We've committed $10,000 worth of, of cash to help uh, get you guys to donate $50,000 of retail toys. So we're, we're over 12,000. Uh, we'd love your help. Go to sellerlabs.com, T for T. Um, maybe somebody will throw in uh, into, into your room, Ed, and you can show the T-shirt. Um, if you make a donation um, over a certain amount, you get a, a, a Seller Labs T-shirt. Um, and we would love for you to participate. But this isn't why we're here. So let's kind of get to why we're here today. Um, we are going to cover a, a couple of topics. For people that don't know, my name is Jeff Cohen, and uh, this is Ed. Uh, we call him PPC Ed in the office. Right. That is right. Yeah. And, um, and, and we're going to cover a couple of topics around sponsored ads around Q4. Um, and we have something extra for you guys today. So we created a, a bonus, right? So, Oh, there's the t-shirt. Awesome. So everybody, it's a long sleeve t-shirt seller labs says you care, says you donated. So if you want one of those, uh, go to that website that I just had up sellerlabs.com. Somebody will post it below. T for T, and you can see the details of that. Okay, on to Q4. Q4 is here, right? It's happening now. Um, we're trying something new with today's uh, Facebook Live. We're going to keep the content of this Facebook Live to about 30 minutes. But what we created for you guys was 
uh, some bonus content. So you don't have to do it now, but when you're done, um, you can go to this URL and the URL will also be in the uh, comments below. And um, Ed has kind of gone into even more detail for how to implement the things that we're going to talk about um, right now on um, on this. So, um, Ed, let's talk first about kind of the change that's happened at Amazon. So Seller Labs um, identified this change last week. Um, we wrote a blog on Friday. Um, somebody post. Uh, Caroline, if you can post the blog below for people to see the blog article, Amazon made a change for sponsored ads. Can you kind of explain to everybody what we identified um, and, and then we can talk about what it means? Yeah. So it looks like that uh, Amazon has actually changed where ads are being advertised on Amazon. And this means like actually used to in the past, you'd see advertisements on the right hand side, usually of the search results, whenever you're on Amazon looking for a product. And there'd actually be advertisements on that sidebar and looks like that has started to go away, uh, which means that all the ads now are going to be kind of confined to those other placements, whether they're at like the top, the headline search ads, the product uh, placement ads as well. So it looks like that the sidebar ads have, you know, been taken away as something Amazon's changing towards, it looks like. And that's going to do a lot of things going forward, especially in Q4. You're going to see a lot of changes coming from that as well. Okay, so what's like the immediate impact that a seller is going to see? How? What is something that like I wake up today and maybe there's something I see in my ads that, that just don't look right that may be attributed to this change? And the thing that we want to be careful on is that um, Amazon is always testing. Mm -hmm. And so while it looks like this test has been pushed out across the board, we're not 100% positive that that's happened. And it is possible that, that Amazon reverses course and puts the ad placement back. So just so everyone's clear, the people that are out there stating that this is a, a foregone conclusion, it's a fact, um, they're wrong because uh, they don't have any inside contacts at Amazon that are telling them this. Um, it's just something that has been identified um, and something we, we clearly see, and it's possible that it's that it's going to happen. But but what are sellers going to see? Yes, I mean, first of all, you're going to see a drop in your impressions possibly because you're not going to have that extra, you know, the placement area to the right hand side for your ads to be advertised. So that can make your impressions go down. Um, but then on top of that, you will see those bids go up over time because since there are, you know, fewer placements for your advertisements to show, more people are, you know, still bidding because it is Q4, but you're going to see your bids possibly go up and your spend will go up as well because it's becoming more competitive to get your ads in the remaining placements on each page. Yeah. So Dawn's saying that she's seen um, her her sales gone down. Mm -hmm. um, how how would you be able to tell whether your sales have gone down specific to this change? I mean, you could really just go in and actually look at, um, like you can do something like the uh, the placement report that you can do uh, through your sponsored product ads. You can actually see where they've been placed, whether they're at the top or other, and kind of see how many impressions you're getting from that and your clicks and conversions. You can also compare your uh, your traffic from like, you know, the previous week or the week before that to this week currently as well to see how your impressions have started the trend. Um, so that way you can kind of see if there is any type of, you know, drop immediately um, caused by this change that they're trying to testing out. Yeah, and so um, let's talk about that ad placement report because I think that's a very critical report um, that a lot of sellers don't don't necessarily use. So kind of explain what is the ad placement report and what does it tell a seller? Yeah, so what it does is it really tells you whether your ads were at the top of the search results, which is like you know the first three whenever you search something that show up, or they were in other. It's not really that you know detail, but it does tell you if you have advertised in an other position or at the top position. And this is really used to see if you're actually getting conversions when your ad is at the top of that page. Because if it is, you need to increase your spending on that one because it's working out for you. If it says other, that could mean like halfway down the page. It could be like on the next page. It's like, you know, products related to this. It can be in many other places. So they're not that detailed about that. But by looking at this, you can see exactly, you know, which ones are leading to that top placement and you should focus your spending on that. Um, but then of course, so that you can kind of see how those impressions have changed because if you're at the top placement and you're not getting, you know, a lot of impressions or anything, you may need to change something up with your campaigns going forward. Yeah. And so, um, and so what do sellers, uh, is there a trend, right? So you work with, with hundreds of sellers, you probably are looking at over, you know, over a hundred or so seller accounts in any given month. Um, you, you help manage, you know, ad accounts for sellers. 
what are you typically seeing when you look at that placement report? Are, are there particular ads that work better than other, are there particular placements that work better than other placements? Well, I mean, so like going into this, something that I think is really huge is like, you know, the, the top placement is big because if you have top placement and you see that an advertisement is working well with the top placement, it can do something like bid plus, which will actually make sure that you do get that top placement more only if it's converting well. Um, but also the headline search ads are really big going into the, this, this new quarter because that's where a lot of traffic can come from. And it's also a little cheaper now because it's not as competitive since it is kind of a newer feature for all sellers. Um, so those are the two biggest areas that I see some of the most traffic um, is that top placement and the headline search ads as of recent at least. Okay, so I'm gonna ask kind of a loaded question. I know the answer, but I'd like you to kind of explain it to everybody else. Uh oh. Like, so, you know, Bid Plus, right? Bid Plus, uh, for those that aren't aware of it, Bid Plus basically says that um, I'm willing to spend 50% more than my bid, right? So if my bid's a dollar, it means I'm, I'm willing to spend a dollar 50 only if I can get a top placement, right? That's how Bid Plus works. That's the, the confines of that. I think we did a blog article on Bid Plus mm -hmm. and we can include that blog article in the notes for people that want to learn more. Why do I want to spend more? And so you, you kind of like, 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 you know, there's this, there's this belief and I've been on Google advertising and Amazon advertising and such. And it's like, okay, yeah, of course they want me to spend more, but mm -hmm. if I spend more, if my ads aren't performing now, why, why, how does spending more help me? Yeah. So this is actually something that my colleague Ty and I really, I could spend like a whole entire day, like, you know, diving into this theory and seeing you know, like, is bid plus really worth it? And, you know, used to, I was really against it because I was the same way. I was like, well, of course they want us to spend more money, but like, what do I get out of it? And this really goes back to that, that uh, the advertisement, you know, the, the placement report, because if you see that you have a campaign that actually has like, you know, when it's getting the top placement, you're getting those conversions. If you know you're going to get conversions, you want to have bid plus on because then that way you'll get that top placement more often and that can lead to more conversions so you want to look at that placement report first to see if it actually is providing conversions for your product if it is then you can turn to bid plus and see if it continues to give you those conversions over time so i'm not a fan of just doing it all over that just seems kind of reckless to me just turning it on just because because you need to have data to back that up i like to see that okay cool in this campaign and for this new particular placement I'm getting conversions for this keyword. I want to turn on bid plus for that. You know, that, that is good because I have proof that this is leading to conversions. So I will turn on bid plus. And all, like I said, I was against it, but after diving into it and actually having some type of factual evidence to back up the conversions that I'm getting, I'm a huge fan of it. Right. Now. Okay. So, so this is where like, it kind of goes against conventional thinking, but our, the clients that we work with, right? The, the accounts that we, where we manage people's sponsored accounts um, or where you're just helping sellers with Ignite and you're kind of, you know, guiding them through the process. Mm -hmm. We actually see that if you spend more money, your ACOS goes down. Right, yeah, because if you are spending more money, you're getting that placement. And if you're positive that that, that actually has been successful to lead to conversions, you're getting more conversions, which causes your A cost to go down because you may be spending money to actually get that placement to begin with, but if it's providing a conversion, that goes back to your cost of sale and makes it go down over time. Even just like getting a couple more sales on a particular campaign that you may have, your A cost can go down by like 30% sometimes because just that one sale makes up for all the other clicks that you've spent for previously. Yeah, and I think the thing for people to realize, and, and Ed, you and I are, are we, we really kind of harp on this, right? Like it's, a, it's about metrics, right? It really is about metrics and you as a seller have to know your metrics. You have to understand your metrics. And so like, we can't sit here and say, turn on bid plus, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and so I wanna make sure we reiterate that because you actually said, you need to look at your data, you need to look at your report and then based off your data and based off your report, you may wanna turn bid plus on. So, so let, let us know, are you guys using bid plus? If you are, you know, put a little plus sign in your comments. If you're not using bid plus, put a little minus sign in your comments. Just curious if people are using bid plus or not. Um, is there any other report that Amazon has that you think is kind of critical to like understanding your business before, you know, looking at your making adjustments? I mean, I use ignite for all those reportings to be honest. So like, I don't really stay in. Is there a certain one that you're kind of looking at in particular? That you yeah. I mean, there's about? one, there, there's one that I, that I typically recommend. And that is that, you know, people call, 
and they um and the, it's like one of my favorite things oh your software doesn't work and um and and what i'll always ask them for is the business report mm -hmm. um and so this is a, actually a facebook live that we did about two weeks ago with peter kearns um it's a business report that gives you data at the child asin um it's it's uh performance at the by child asin and what's really critical about this report is that it gives you page conversion and you know and that's kind of what like bid plus is giving you too right is page conversion or, or it's keyword conversion and so if your if your page conversion is low it doesn't matter how much money you spend on sponsored ads you're gonna your sponsored ads are gonna your acos is still gonna be bad right and this is actually something I don't want to dive in too much because actually in the bonus content that we have, uh, we do kind of go over this a little bit more in depth or I do um, about like, you know, prep, preparing yourself for Q4. But I'll just say, just like what you said, if your listing is terrible, you can throw as much money as you want to at your sponsor product campaigns and you're still going to have the same results. So you want to look at your conversions, you want to see that session data and actually see if you're getting conversions and if your page is actually optimized to begin with. That's huge. It's a huge okay. the process. Yeah. Like if you haven't looked at this report, you need to look at this report. Um, there's a, we can put a link to the video in the show notes um, for you to see. I know that the recording is kind of tough because it's kind of a small screen and we're going to, you know, we're going to fix that in the future. But um, so, so um, you also wanted to bring up the idea um, of like some gold inside your sponsored ads, right? That's, that's kind of the way you described it to me. You mean the ASINs that you may see? Yeah, the ASIN. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so a lot of people see these in their reports, right? They see ASIN data in their auto-targeted reports. Can you kind of talk about like what those are, what a seller can do with them, and you know why why you think they're very important? Yeah, I mean, so ASINs will show up in your auto-targeting campaign, and simply put, all that really means is that your product was advertised on another product's page. And Amazon has to correlate, like if somebody clicks on your ad because Amazon's trying to drive traffic to it, if they click on your ad, they have to correlate that click back to a keyword. But if there's no essential, like no initial keyword that drove that traffic, they drive it back to the ASIN of that right. product. So in other words, if a user comes in from, um, from Google or from external traffic, or they stumbled upon your page from some other way where they didn't use search, mm -hmm. then, then Amazon associates the, the, the ad back to an ASIN instead of a, a search term. Exactly. And yeah. this this really is a gold mine of information. Uh, so many sellers would just overlook these, these ASINs that they see and they're just like, oh, well, this is just wasted space. I can't do anything with them. I can't put them in my manual targeting campaign. So why are they here? They are there because they are essential to actually optimizing everything about your listing and your campaigns that you have. Amazon is pretty much giving you a list of your competitors right there inside your auto targeting campaign right because they're basically they're basically um they are products that amazon is associating to your product mm -hmm. so they may or may not actually be competitors but they are right. products that amazon thinks is related to your product in some mm -hmm. way shape or form and from there you can go through a course always look at the product first on amazon make sure it actually is like you know a competitor product or something similar to yours and use a tool like scope and see what kind of keywords they're ranking for uh, that's one of the first steps that I do is I use scope, see what keywords are ranking for so I can possibly find new keywords I never thought of using in my listing or like my back end of my listing or even my sponsored product campaigns. And that is just rich information right there. And it could be a lot of information I never even thought about using before. But then even taking it a step further is analyze these, you know, possible competitors listings. Look at their descriptions, look at their titles, look at their images, look at the questions that shoppers are asking. And also, you know, look at the reviews. If you can take this data and answer some of those questions in your own listing before shopper has to actually ask you on your listing, you're helping them out with a process that can lead to more conversions. They may be there, have a question, see the answer in the description and be like, oh, I can go and get this because my question's already been answered right there. And also address anything that may have been addressed in you know, another listing's uh, reviews look at the negative reviews. Those can tell you what you don't want to do with your product or what their faults may be that you can correct in your own product to begin with. Yeah. So, so um, I guess to wrap that up, like the ASIN data is super heavy critical and, um, and sellers don't do enough, enough with it. So, you know, in, in our remaining time here, I know you, you, you've got bonus information. Again, the, the URL is, is right here on the screen. Um, 
Whoa, where are we? There we are. Uh, right there on the screen. Uh, sellerlabs.com slash ignite Q4. Um, that URL is going to get you kind of Ed's bonus video that's going to give you kind of more in depth of what we're talking about. But let's super high level. Let's go through. I'm uh, I'm going to spend tomorrow and I'm going to prepare my sponsored ads for Q4. You know, what high level, what do I need to do? I mean, one thing I like to point out is you need to check in more often. I, I have on every other past talk I've you know ever given about sponsored product. And I was just about to say that. You always yeah. tell people don't check too often. I, I, I feel so bad, but like, you know, usually I tell them to check it once or twice a week, but now you need to be in there a lot more often because you're going to have so much more traffic, especially now after this change that Amazon's kind of trying to implement with the placement, you are going to have more traffic, more competition, and you're going to be spending a lot more money up front. Um, you may, of course, see more conversions from that. But also at this time, other competitors are stepping into the field in their advertising as well. So your budgets will be maxed out a little earlier in the day, possibly. So to make sure that you're checking in as time goes on, as it gets closer to those big holidays, like you know, Cyber Monday and even you know, uh, Black Friday too, you want to be ready for those by trending that budget upwards so you have enough room so you can advertise all day. Okay, um, so I shouldn't wait till I shouldn't wait till Black Friday and just change my budget that day. That's just that's just a shot in the dark. If you don't have any data to back that up, then you're just kind of just guess and checking. And you can only guess and check once because that only happens once a year. Of course, okay, you can look so back how, at like when year. should I start? When should I start adjusting my bids? When should I start adjusting my now? Now, do it now. now. Go ahead and jump in. Look at your campaigns. You may already be seeing an increase in your sales just because you know more people are on Amazon looking at the product. But also you're going to see your bids maybe going up because the competition is coming in. So you have to be prepared for this. Of course, okay, so it's going to get cheat. a lot I'm more. Cheat look at, I'm going to cheat and look at my phone. Um, and, and the reason I'm looking at my phone, so that's why my eyes are down, is because I want to look at the dates, right? And so today is November 1st. Black Friday is the 23rd, right? So we're essentially 23 days away. Mm -hmm. but if you guys remember from last year, right, I think today is like the official day that if your product doesn't, isn't shipped into Amazon by today, then it won't be in the warehouse. Amazon started their black Friday deals yes. on the 16th of last year. And from what I can tell, they're actually starting November holiday deals pretty much the whole month of November. Yep. There was actually an email today that I got that said like like pre Black Friday deals, and they're already starting to count down for these deals coming up. Like they are, people are fighting for your dollars. They're fighting for your money as the shopper, right? Not 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 us as the sellers, but as the shopper. And so you're right. Like you can't just wait until the 23rd to start doing this. You you have to start doing. You have to start planning and understanding. Now, how can Ignite help? How can Ignite help with that? Well. Ignite's really great because you have these graphs and you have these tables so you can actually sort the data with ease. But one thing I really like is you can see a line graph of your costs that you have over the past few days so you can see how your budget is trending. And this is wonderful. This is something I use for all the accounts that we're managing. And it allows me to see how the budget's trending so I can know, okay, cool. It met the budget one time last week or in the past few days. I'm going to go and up it by like 10 more dollars or so. Yeah. So I can kind of see a projection as time is going on with that. Um, but then also with that, I can zero in on each keyword and see how it's doing individually. And I compare it to just like a specific day. Like I can just look at one day of data, look at the next day as well to see how it's trending upwards. And using those suggested bids as well, I can kind of see if that's changed. And also just monitoring which keywords are working and which ones are not. And especially if I'm doing something like turning on bid plus for some of those terms, seeing if it's actually leading to profit, if it's leading to those conversions. All right, like, we got a couple of questions. So let's... Let's get to these questions. I think Nicole just asked a really good one, okay? So Nicole says, um, if you have a strict budget, right? She's trying to stay within a budget and you keep going out of budget early in the day, should she start decreasing her bid so that her budget lasts longer? So this is kind of like, you know, it's double-edged because if you decrease your bid, you may actually lose some impressions on that because you're gonna be outbid by your competitors. If you are doing this, zero in on the keywords that are not converting as well and lower the bids there. Because if you see a lot of keywords that are getting a lot of clicks and costing your budget to run out, but not leading to conversions, decrease those bids. This is something I do normally anyways. But around this time, I would possibly look into stepping your budget up just a little bit because- Yeah, I mean, we don't know, we don't know what she talks about with a strict budget. Her strict budget could be $10,000 a day. Right. I'm, I'm guessing it's not. I'm guessing it's not. But what I, I think that like, 
you have to, the, the thing that you have to think about, and I think this is kind of what you're saying is, is like the cost per click is increasing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're used to paying 50 cents, um, you might be paying a dollar fifty a click, right? And and if your budget is normally ten dollars, and you're not increasing your budget proportionally to how mm -hmm. the cost per click is increasing, then you're you're going to run out of budget. Um, right. I agree with you. I think that focusing in on the on the most profitable search terms, the most profitable keywords, and focusing your budget on that um, is something that that you could that you could do. Um, you could try turning your budget off in the morning, pause your campaigns, turn them on a little bit later in the day mm -hmm. um, so that your budget actually starts to run while other people's budgets run out, right? Mm -hmm. So as some sellers run out of budget, you can then start kind of, you know, the cost per click during the day might actually go down. Right. Um, we're, we're just, we don't know because there are no cost of day, um, you know, reports or anything, but in theory, as the day goes on, less people are bidding for the term. Um, you know, right now there is no way to, you, you can, you can pause your campaign. You can't necessarily set timers to turn your campaigns on and off. Yeah. Um, so, so, and, and, you know, and for each person, you have to kind of figure out what does and doesn't work for you for doing that, because there is no, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon is the best time. And the other thing you have to remember if you're going to start messing with time on your campaigns, right? So uh, there, there's a, uh, a podcaster, Scott Volker, uh, called The Amazing Seller. He talks about how he turns his ads off every night at 11. He turns them back on at 11 in the morning. If you're going to start doing something like that, remember that Amazon still looks at your budget over a full day time period. Mm -hmm. And so Amazon isn't going to say, oh, well, they turn their ads on at 2 o'clock. I need to spend all this by, you know, by midnight. And so they may not send your ads through the velocity right. that they need. You kind of turn the algorithm on and off when you do that. And there's no way to truly know how you affect your ads mm -hmm. by turning your budgets on and off. But it is a tactic for you to consider. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to get the optimization done first. Because um, if you're spending money on clicks that aren't driving sales, um, that that's the biggest. And so so... If I'm looking at my search terms, what's the, I, so Ignite has a wasted search term report, right? And all of that. But like, what's the number, is there a number one thing that people are doing to waste money on ad spend? I mean, really, they're just, they're not diving into the actual user search terms. Um, they kind of look at it from like a keyword level where they look at a keyword apple slicer and it's a broad match. And they're like, wow, I have 33 clicks for apple slicer. I'm getting some traffic. But then if you actually go into the user search term report for that keyword, you'll see that those may be spread out against 33 different search terms. And that's not enough data to really make any type of assumption off of which term is converting and driving those sales for your product. So you have to take it a step deeper. You have to actually go into your search term report and find out exactly what terms are providing those conversions and make them their own keywords as like a phrase or an exact match. Instead of looking at it from like a really, really top level overview you want to dive into those terms and find out what's working for you yeah and the and the and the one thing that i tell people is um i completely agree with you ed and what i always share with people is um hold on i'm putting the url back up i can't type and talk at the same time <laughs> what what uh, did i spell that right ignite uh, yeah okay yeah um and so what i always tell people is Look at your keywords and make sure they just and your search terms and make sure they describe your product. And so there's a there's a campaign that I would that that we manage and we were looking at, um, and it's for a coffee product. And all of their impressions were from um, an espresso. Were in the espresso. They had like eighty thousand campaigns. I'm sorry, eighty thousand impressions. And from the eighty thousand impressions that they had. Um, like 79,000 had the word machine in it, mm -hmm. but they were not a machine. They were a coffee product. And so, you know, if you can clean up with negative keywords, some of the, some of these random clicks that may or may not eventually lead to a sale, mm -hmm. um, that's going to help you a lot, Nicole, and, and really focus in on the, on the keywords that really describe your product. I would say the tighter budget you have, the the shorter list of keywords you should have and the and 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 so in ignite we use confidence and we use importance i would make decisions with less confidence 
um, because I would be looking to make decisions faster. Whereas mm-hmm. normally during the year, I'd be looking for a 60% confidence. During the holidays, I might drop that down to a 30% confidence because I need my budget to go longer. And, and, and I want to kind of use some data and just move forward versus letting all the data um, build up. Right. Yeah, that's something I always tell people is like, you know, we have these suggestions that come through Ignite and they may have a low confidence and low importance, but you know your product best. Like, you know, Ignite doesn't learn about your product and know exactly what keywords, you know, are going to drive all the traffic. It looks at data to make those suggestions. So if you see a suggestion that has a low confidence and low importance, but you know in your head that you shouldn't be bidding on that keyword, go ahead and accept it. Go ahead and act on it as early as possible if you want to, because you know exactly what you want to do to drive traffic to your product. Awesome. So um, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, we're trying to keep these a little bit shorter. Um, is there anything you want to add here at the end, Ed? Uh, definitely go to solarlabs.com forward slash Ignite Q4. It's uh, a little bonus video that I made about prepping your sponsor product campaigns for Q4. And definitely act on everything I talk about in there now. Start today. Do not wait. You want to have some data before the strike hits. You want to have some you know, more organic data from your campaigns before you actually see that huge increase. This also helps you go back to what your campaigns were like beforehand after the quarter has ended. Yeah, and I'm gonna just kind of hit on a couple of things here um, as we recap. One is um, sellerlabs.com slash uh, T for T. Um, so if you would like to make a donation um, to our Toys for Tots campaign and help us out, we would love for you to, uh, to help us out in, in that. Um, if you heard us talking about managing campaigns and, uh, and you're interested in, in us managing campaigns for you, um, you can type um, you can type PPC Ed in the uh, comments below, and we'll reach out to you to talk about uh, campaign management. So mm-hmm. type in PPC Ed in the uh, in the comments below, and and we'll talk to you about managing your campaigns. Um, if you haven't tried Ignite, um, there is a special offer to try Ignite. Ignite does a lot of self service campaign management for you, and so that details at Ignite sla- uh, Ignite slash Ignite Q4. Um, and if you have additional questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Um, Ed is going to, you know, track this post and, and we'll continue to answer questions, um, you know, in the weeks to come. And, uh, thank you. Ed also does, um, Ed, you also do like a, a, a monthly like webinar for Ignite, Ignite users, right? Yeah. Yeah, we actually, uh, we had one yesterday, actually, about what I talked about, uh, diving into your search terms, to actually find profitable search terms inside your campaign. Um, another one will happen in about a month or so. And these are, you know, really great because I go into more, I go into more in depth about what you should do. And I show that it's not scary. Don't be scared. Like sponsored products are fun. They're awesome. Yeah. They're super fun for Ed. Yeah. If you're new, if you're new to, if you're new to sponsored products, um, we, we have a resource page called sellerlabs.com slash ppc this is for newer um new new to um spa sponsored product ads um and you know and we would love to keep sharing content with you so um let us know and everybody have a great rest of the week and we'll talk to you guys soon see you guys thanks